the policy committee meeting. Um, we uh, really quickly are going to just do um, offer public comment for anybody who's interested. Um, if you are interested in public comment, the process is um, if you're online, you would raise your little blue or yellow um, Zoom hand. You have three minutes to um, provide comment, and at which point um, we will have to, to stop if it's, it goes beyond three minutes. Um, public comments are made to um, the chair, in this case is Frela, um, and uh, that's, that's, that's it. So if, you're, if there's anyone interested, we have no one here in person. Crystal, so you have, um, Diane's giving you permission to talk, so you have three minutes, you can go ahead and get started. All right. Um, Shannon, did you have an opportunity to check your email? Uh, yes, okay. I did. We can, yeah, we cannot hold an executive session. Sorry, I wrote you back. Um, oh, nope, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so today you're discussing student discipline, JK? No, no, we're, we student were not. Tools. Yeah, we, we were, uh, so no, we were, we, the board read it, um, the board didn't have any um, feedback for change. So we were just waiting to hear, I know the SEA was interested in providing something. Um, if there's something you want to say about it, uh, we were, we're going to consider it at our next board meeting for second reading. Okay. So you're doing code of conduct today? Staff conduct, right? The agenda is just to Yeah, it's uh, all the stuff that's on the agenda, the activity fees, the, and then we're going to continue going talking about our staff conduct with students. Or we're going to start talking about that. Yes. Okay. So um, I'm looking at the draft that was posted. And just a gentle reminder, we should probably change school unit name to Scarborough Schools. Yes. And then Thank under you. unacceptable contact C, where it says encouraging uh, as unacceptable conduct, encouraging students to combine their personal or family problems and or relationships. Um, we quite frequently tell students to talk to a trusted adult. So that flies in the face of what is written under C. Um, because we say if there's something going on, staff will say to students, if something's going on at home, if you're not feeling safe at home, reach out to a trusted adult. And I'm assuming that would be encouraging students to combine personal and or family problems. So I, I think that that is a disjoint for what we um, are encouraged to do, which is one of the things that we're working on with social and emotional is to be available to our students what they need. So under C, under acceptable contact. And then in that same part um, under F, where it says that it's unacceptable for a staff member to disclose personal or family or private matters, wanna share with you that one way of establishing relationships is to share something like, if a student were to come to a staff member and say, my mom and dad have separated, they're going through a divorce, it would be pretty, I would say, to form a connection and a relationship that a staff member would say, I understand how hard that is. My parents divorced or something similar, which technically would also violate that policy. But I think that that again, is trying to build relationships with kids. In G, it says terms of endearment or over familiar manner, especially at the K-5 schools, teachers will often say friends or cute uh, because we're trying to get away from gender related topics and so, or names. So um, staff have gone to um, my classroom of cherubs or my classroom of, um, I'm trying to think some other ones that I've heard, but I'm 
I don't know. I don't know if that would fall under a term of endearment. Um, also under H, students address you by your first name. In many of our programs, students are addressed by their first name with a title like Miss Sue, especially in our high needs um, FLS and um, SLS programs, because last names are often hard to read or hard to say for those students. And so uh, many of those programs will use the title and a first name, which would be a violation of this policy or a nickname. Um, kids call me Ms. AC. Everybody in the district does, does that call, is that a nickname technically? Um, and then I of that same piece, um, friending students or engaging in other interactions on social media through digital applications outside of school approved activity, which I assume school act approved activity would be banned, lacrosse, civil rights, etc. And then my question would be, would parents need to be aware of the social media or is an automatic assumption that parents will be made aware that that is a possibility? Because it does not say that in our um, technology computer use policy, it says that it is absolutely not acceptable. So we would either have to change this wording or we would have to change the wording of the acceptable use policy for technology. So something to think about there, those are in conflict. And then under um, staff members should consult with the building principal under P, it says socializing or spending time with students, including but not limited to blah, 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 meals outside of school sponsored activities, except as in participants in organized community activities, Many teachers are invited to and go to end of year parties for kids, which would not be school sponsored. Um, they go to swim meets that are not necessarily school sponsored, they're clubs. Um, they go to little league games, again, not a school sponsored event or a dance recital, not a school sponsored event. And so things that our district regularly um, that our staff regularly do and to establish those relationships with students and see them more than just the students that are sitting in front of us for math um, would be significant violations of this policy. And I, I think when we're pushing, well, not pushing, one of the goals of the board is social and emotional well-being that if staff were to follow this policy to the letter, a lot of those opportunities for building relationships, you would eliminate. And so I, I would strongly suggest that you, this goes back to, to the drawing board. Um, and we really relook at what this is instead of just a canned language. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Crystal. Is there anybody else on the, I think that's it, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll go ahead and close public comment. I will turn it over to Gair. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> So next on our policy, uh, next on the agenda is the school safety policy or procedure discussion update. Um, I have not heard any updates. None of you have, yeah, or no. Jillian, if you have from Brian or the DEMT team. I don't know if we've got I can probably there. give you a, a quick update. Sure. Uh, we've been doing um, a lot of work. In fact, yesterday we had a full day meeting um, with our building leaders. Uh, to um, update our uh, comprehensive school emergency plans. Uh, so those are going to be uh, finished up within the next week or two. And so we're really excited about that. Um, you know, all of our schools have had those documents, um, but we've moved to like one 
um, format for all six schools so that as it relates to public safety officials, um, they don't have to become acclimated with how does one school organize and how do they find the documents, um, so on and so forth. So we've really standardized that. Um, and so we're excited about that. Um, and um, certainly, um, you know, the comprehensive plan itself is a confidential document um, for multitude of reasons, but, um, you know, we would be um, happy to make the board aware that, that we have those completed uh, when they are done. And um, those will only be shared with uh, members of those school incident teams. Um, and then we have also updated the parent information guide that is the public document mm -hmm. um, that goes out as well. So that will be updated on our website um, as this work comes to a close. Cool. Question? Really, good. really, really good work. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, did any, any, any place during that discussion, did it seem like the policy committee has a role or they want or are looking for a policy or something? Because um, I think we went back and forth, or sort of like I think the policy committee. I don't know if this is right for everybody. I didn't. I didn't necessarily sure this was the right place to have a policy. Other that would actually have meaning to it. We could have generally, if schools will be safe, like language of a policy that schools will take safety, uh, you know, security seriously, and each building would have to tailor their own policies for that building because it's building specific. Mm -hmm. There's some general stuff, but it's very building specific in terms of the details. We wouldn't want those on our policies on our website because um, it's not appropriate. It goes in the document that's right. secure. Um, but our, I think our policy, you know, the members of the public wanted us to set a policy that, in some specifics, every door is going to be locked, which I don't think can be a policy for a variety of reasons. But um, we couldn't make a policy that wouldn't be anything other than just platitude, essentially, which is not really what policies are meant to be, which is you know, right. that we are going to have safe schools, which is not something that I think mm -hmm. is appropriate and it wouldn't be meaningful mm -hmm. whereas the document you're working on is really meaningful mm -hmm. is there a place where we could pull that out so we could point members of the public who have concerns so that they're assured that safety is being considered even though it's not being shared because it's not safe to share yeah i think i i think what you're referring to is is the public facing document that will outline the framework for <laughs> Um, how we respond and handle emergency situations and, and handle school safety. Yeah. So the, you know, there's an element to what we've been doing to kind of unify the plans at each specific school and then do it in a format that's consistent. And um, by taking like a system-wide approach to it and, and reformatting it so it's easier to read, not only are, because a lot of times you'll have situations where you're crossing over between buildings as well. And, and different people will have different roles as part of a building specific um, crisis team. And then, you know, a situation that will involve multiple buildings, right? So um, that's all being done. And then as Diane me mentioned, there's, um, there already is and has, and, and is part of this revision, a public facing document that goes through the elements of, of safety planning and crisis teams and, and all those kind of things that that is uh, what we want to share with the public. Yeah, and I think for like those of, like and events that, that makes sense. I think I know mean, the members of the public. Piece, that I'm oh, sorry, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, no, and that, and that piece I think I think um, would be good for um, for it's not that's the thing. It's not really a policy, so but certainly you know um, yeah. input and review from. From the board. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the the people who came to this meeting. We had a good uh, a person attend and the public meeting a couple of meetings ago. And we've had a variety of emails. I think those were very specific to one school and one situation having to lock doors. Sort of like, yep. how do we respond to that without, you know, I don't want to say like this is not really a policy thing and make a member of the public feel like we're kind of like not our not our deal because yeah. I think school safety is everyone's mm -hmm. responsibility and I don't want to convey that we don't care or that we it's not something that we're taking seriously but at the same time how do we because I know crisis events yeah I mean, situation, I, but also day-to-day -day security was what was really brought forward yeah. yeah I mean I think to your point um the comprehensive document outlines all of the things proactively and reactively that mm -hmm. we're going to in, you know put in place 
um, as it relates to school safety. And, you know, if at any time a member of the public doesn't feel like we're attending to school safety, then I think, you know, that's for the, you know, that's under the auspices of the, you know, the superintendent to say, okay, here's some feedback we got. What are we going to do to find out about what's really, what's happening with the situation and how we're going to correct that, correct. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because I don't know that that it's anything other than an administrative responsibility to oversee, right? Like that's yeah. what you guys task us with. Yeah, and I would agree. Right? I don't think this, I don't think yep. we can have a policy that's right. Like, Make the building safe. That's it's meaning, right. that's meaningless, and we can't drill down and say mm -hmm. every door is going to be locked at all times because that's also right. not right. But we also want to, you know, we want it, you know, be open to hearing that feedback and right. then exploring those situations, just like any other situation that might come up um, as part of a student day, whether it's you know something that happens to a student, mm -hmm. etc. You know, we look into those things and we investigate and we figure out what do we need to do to move forward. Sure. Yeah, and that yeah. being said, there there is obviously a board member and board role in kind of being a part of that annual review right. and updating of safety safety protocols and all mm -hmm. of those things. And that's you know part of the reason why we made the decision to include um, not just a, a a board member but also a town councilor and as part of the DEMT mm -hmm. um, meetings and and process for review of of everything that's not just school safety, but is also community and yeah. public safety. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's been, it's really Under deep work that we, you know, that we undertook with the, mm -hmm. um, you know, assumption that moving forward, we then just have to, you know, um, review it and make changes as we see fit. But, you know, we've really dug in and done, you know, a deep piece of that work this year. Great. So yeah, we're excited about that. Awesome. So I don't think that we need to continue on the agenda unless someone else feels differently. No, I feel like we put it to that. I think we put it to that. Perfect. That's good. On to activities. All right. Thanks for joining us today, Mike. Mm -hmm. Shannon, if you give me that yellow sticky note, I also have some information oh. on the other side of that that will be helpful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we go. Conversation. <laughs> When can I sign up for Baji? <laughs> Soon. <laughs> um, excited. So I guess I'm transitioning. Yeah, I, I will give it back to you. <laughs> you can keep going. You're doing a good job. Um, uh, so we were discussing, I'm trying to pull my brain into focus. Um, back to activity fees. We were discussing this ideally in, ahead of uh, the start of school, which is coming up like extremely quickly. Yeah. Because I'm feeling that way. Mm -hmm. um, and we were trying to, we discussed a bit, a bunch of different ideas kind of brainstorming. And I think we asked for some more specific information, which Diane, you gave us some of that over email. And we wanted I did. Mike to mm -hmm. sort of weigh in on, so the different thoughts being, how do we, you know, is there a way to do this better with activity fees? And one idea would be to have one fee for the year so we don't pay per sport. Or per club, and then there was differences between clubs and so before we jump into conversation, I wonder just for the benefit of you know people who might be watching this on mm -hmm. public, if we could um even just read off that information that we have about um participation that I sent you, that sure. data. Yeah. And then I also have another piece of data um that um that Kate was able to retrieve for me, and that is. Um, the amount of money that we um, collect for uh, fees as it relates to um, sports and activities. And so uh, for this past year, 2022-2023, the total amount collected um, for those specific fees uh, totaled $133,619 in 21-22 that was $113,401. And then we didn't include the, the two years prior to that because mm -hmm. uh, one of those years was a hybrid year, a uh, full hybrid year because of COVID. And the year previous to that was the year that we, um, we did close in the spring and go completely online. So, you know, Kate did look beyond that in terms of before those two years. And, and I think um, with certainty, we can say 
we collect, you know, somewhere within the ballpark of $130,000 annually. Um, I think that 113 uh, was because, again, we were just getting back to regular school. And so not necessarily quite at that level um, that, that we've been collecting historically. Was she able to um, run any numbers on, um, I, I'm trying to find my notes as well. My brain is scattered right now, but I, we had talked about like a 25, a $50. <clears throat> we didn't run any scenarios. Um, what we did look at was um, again, that piece of information that I sent you, which, mm -hmm. you know, I think at our last, at our last meeting where we discussed this, we talked about um, a good piece of information would be to find out how many students only participate in mm -hmm. one sport, sport yeah. or one activity, um, because I think we were trying to uh, kind of uh, flesh out whether a one size fits all one time fee would be a benefit or not, yeah. <laughs> right? Because do we have so many kids playing multiple things that this would benefit them? You know, how, for how many students might they actually be paying more if it was a one size fits all? So, um, you know, that's in that, um, that information. So if you want to- Yeah, I have it pulled up. I can read it. Do you want to read it? Yeah, you got it? Yeah. Okay. 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 It doesn't matter. Can you read it? Can read it? It's for information. Dan, thank you. Yeah. Um, so kids only doing one sport, 230. Kids only doing one club, 150. That's the high school. One of the middle school, we have 121 doing one sport and 103 doing one club. So the my big sense is that most kids who are involved in sports are doing more than one. Mm -hmm. That's that's I think that's what I would take from that. That's what that, that's my takeaway. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, because if you've got, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, you have like 90% participation. Yeah, it dropped down to about 87, but yes, we're in the high 80s, low 90s for participation. I think the only number that might be a little off in that is this was the first year we started having high school club programs registering family ID. And unfortunately, it's a process. And so we certainly have discovered that not every child registered in family ID that participated in the club. Mm -hmm. And so um, certainly the middle school numbers would be really accurate and the high school athletic numbers would be, but we're still kind of um, going through that, the growing pains of clubs registering family ID too, so that we can be more accurate with that information. But um so, but other than that, yes, uh, um, in terms of student activity fees, Scarborough has always had an activity fee. Um, for the years prior to when I started, um, about 20 years prior to I started, they had, the activity fee was $50. It was a one-time fee and people paid $50. It was not well collected. It was not well managed, but there was in the books, a rule around paying a fee for participation. And so that's been around for years and years and years, over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so um, the year before I started, so about 15 years ago, the board at that time decided to increase the fees, mostly due to um, the economy at the time, you know, that or cut all the programs. And so the, the, um, it was almost every district at that time. Every district at that yeah. time. Yep. And mm -hmm. so the fees jumped from to what it is now and hasn't really changed from what it is now. The agreement at the time was that um, what would be considered service clubs would not pay a fee. So student government, um, mm -hmm. key club, interact club, builders club, those things wouldn't pay a fee, the service clubs but all the other clubs would pay a fee and all athletics would. And the fee was different at the different, at the two different phase levels. Mm -hmm. Wentworth was not included at that time, but at that time, there weren't really um, any Wentworth clubs to speak of at that time. Um, and so it's, it's evolved over time and it's certainly become a offset 
in the budget and um so yeah. i'm not sure how we would you know i'm just giving you the information i'm not sure where that money would come from otherwise mm -hmm. and so um i mean i feel not my opinion yeah, about right, anything. yeah just right. trying to give you the information I I feel like it's okay for me. I, I don't like to speak for people, but I think where we left things is the committee felt like a fee is appropriate. So uh, if correct me if I, I'm speaking out of turn, but I think we all were sort of leaning in that direction. It's just trying to determine um, a level that feels inclusive for everybody to participate. And what does that look like? And is we had talked about potentially doing a um, almost like an all at heart fee, right? Where people could pay one fee and participate in all the sports they want to participate or participate in the all buffet. the clubs. We're the buffet. We're currently yes. doing the a la carte. I'm sorry, the yeah. buffet yes. version. Yes. If we're working with the food metaphor, which yeah. I'm yeah. All inclusive. <laughs> we're, going to the all all inclusive. inclusive. we're going to the all inclusive. Yes. Part. That's right. <laughs> so our all inclusive cost so that people could participate in multiple things without. Yeah, and that's how, and that's what it was. Um, you know, like I said, probably thirty years ago, up until about fifteen years ago, that's okay. um, that's what it was. It was a, you paid a one-time fee, no matter what you did. So kind of like a college, right? You know, the college yeah. model is you pay this one-time um, fee, and you could do what you wanted. Yeah, um, and then that morphed into you know what it is now i think there is a um cap yeah you know um per, i don't know if it's per family i don't think it's a per family cap but i think it's, it's per, per student. student cap yeah so if student wouldn't pay more than um you know 300, 300 bucks yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it really is trying to, I think where we got hung up, um, it will, I should speak for myself here, where I get hung up is the, um, some of the clubs and it's the, it's the academic clubs. That's, that's, you know, we had that meeting, we, we heard a, a, about some of the concerns. We had a student rap on the board who um, really was very vocal about her concerns around the fees for academic clubs. Um, so we've heard from her, uh, quite a bit as well. Um, so that's where my my hang up tends to be. Um, I I'm also I, I believe that you know when you're paying the fee, you're sort of paying to participate in something um, that not everybody would choose to, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I I I can I get I agree with that. Um, but then I also don't know how you draw the line between the clubs. Because what stop? Where do you, you know, what do we encompass in? You know, if we said math club or, or the debate club, you didn't have to pay fees because those are academic. Well, what about the art? You know, then it's like you get in this slippery slope. Mm -hmm. And when do you? At the time they did the policy, they drew the line at service clubs, service. and so and that and that's pretty clear what service clubs would be. Like I mentioned, Key Club, Builders Club, Interact Club, all the student government, so class officers, student council. Um, so any of those service clubs, um, you know, Ecos Club, you know, all those service clubs, would. that's where they drew the line at the time that they did the policy. Um, for In terms of budget, this might be a key question that I didn't think of until last time. Is there a dis dis different impact um, on the budget for our athletics versus the activities and clubs? Like, is, uh, do we spend more, do we expend more funds to support our athletics than we do? Because right now our fees are different, so I'm assuming that's why. But is it like, is it 50% to 100? I guess, is that the right, do we have the right balance? Because um, athletics are really important. To folks here and we and we have really high participation mm -hmm. and I, i'm missing the background about why we're discussing this like I, you brought you've, you've done a good job explaining it so i haven't but i wasn't here for sort of mm -hmm. when the concerns were brought up and given the high rate of participation i don't know i don't know that we have an issue 
but I'm trying to be responsive to like I'm not saying because like, this was yeah. something that, uh, that sort of mm -hmm. inherited like this is something we have yeah. to talk about yeah. given the percent I mean our participation rate approaching 90 percent mm -hmm. is extraordinary yeah um highly unusual yeah exactly yeah. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. And so I, I want to support yeah. our students because clearly they're taking advantage of this, but it doesn't seem like this is a problem unless do we ha have we, and I don't, I'm not looking at name names, but did the student who had concerns, were they general concerns in general about kind of equity or was it, I know student, I know friends of mine who would do X, but because of this fee, we're not able to. Like, is this really a problem or is this just something we're worried about in general to make sure everybody's And we do waive fees, correct? Yep. We do. We have a whole program for that and it's very Perfect. confidential. People can Great. check when they register in Family ID, they can check off if they need, mm -hmm. you know, financial support. And I'm not naive to think that in Scarborough, some people wouldn't ask for it. Um, but certainly anybody that's that's asked for it, that, to my knowledge, there's been no child denied an opportunity to participate mm -hmm. in any after school activity because of money. Yeah, and I, I, I actually, honestly, like I think the activity fee came into focus because um, we made the decision for the first time to um, charge through Frontline. Like yes. you had to, yes. you know, you had to go through Frontline in order to pay your activity fee. And so the activity fees, it's a little different because there's so many different faculty who are, you know, like, um, running and running a club or an activity that that it, that the how that fee was collected was Different super everybody. variable well it wasn't yeah and it wasn't I, I it think, wasn't it, it really how many it wasn't happening right like, like, like they were chasing system, money from yeah more systematic systematic way, you know it's just having it go on to the website right so you yeah. and so you end up having like some people were really good about collecting the fees and then other people weren't and then you know what i mean so it, was, it, yeah. it depended on who was kind of you know owning that so, yeah. so i think it. i think that's why honestly why it probably came in because all of a sudden the kids were like Wait a minute, there's a fee for this? <laughs> well, right. because I think the example we heard specifically from our student rep was that so you have an academic club, and if I participate in sports, I cannot always, those sport practices sometimes interfere with the academic club practices. So I might, in other words, come in and out of an athletic club. I'm sorry, I might come in and out of an academic club. In order to participate in, order to participate in sports. Yeah. And so I wasn't paying for yeah, academic clubs. I was just dropping in. I was just dropping in as right. I saw or I fit. only could do a third of it. Or right. I couldn't. I, so if I can't participate for a year, why am I paying for it? And so it, and it did, Jeff's right, it did come up because of this change in the system. Why don't we just change the activity fee for clubs to one, one fee a year? So I'm messing. If, if clubs are really the issue, we're not having a lot of issues with uh, participation in athletics. The issue is that we want to have some people drop in on clubs. Yes. Why don't we just make one club fee for the year? You can drop in on whatever the advisor is for. And I think you can do that. I think we just need to then understand that that is going Swords. to lower the amount that we bring in from that, right? Mm -hmm. I'd also caution, I would just and not to try to not to have an opinion, just yeah. give you information yeah. is I would caution on that because what you're hearing right now is from club people. I hear from everybody. Mm -hmm. and sure. So it's, um, you know, it, it all depends on who has the loudest voice at that particular time. And so um, I think that you, you'd want to be equitable. Mm -hmm. in your decision making about it so if we're going to do one we should do both in other words yeah meaning that if you're going to adopt the the buffet philosophy as opposed to out of part that it applies to kind of all of the extracurricular activities mm -hmm. you know so you'd have like a you know you'd have you could you would separate it out i mean um you'd have like a, a yearly um activity fee and then a you know or clubs slash activity fee and then a yearly athletic fee the other thing is when you when you pay to play so to speak um there's an investment there which i think is important mm -hmm. as well which you lose if you don't if you don't have to there's a lot of studies that show that even a nominal fee will get you like you won't just disinterested you don't, you don't have people show up 
for a right. couple of sessions instead of bow and bow. You have people who are committed because they've they invested yeah, into it. I think the yeah. other important piece of info is that athletics is essentially eight weeks and the club is year year 32 long. weeks. Yeah. Oh, it's the whole year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so essentially it does one fee. Yeah, club is a if you're in key club, you're in key club for the entire year. year. Yeah, I didn't think about that. And there are some clubs that are seasonal, like yeah, Oak Hill players and things like that, yeah. but there's no rules that they can't do things all year. In fact, our most our most recent past Oak Hill players director did year-round yeah. activities. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and so it all depends on like the superintendent said, who the person is that's running it and the types of things they do with athletics. The rules are much stricter. There's sure. only a certain yeah, window that. that you can mm -hmm. participate, yeah. and mm -hmm. you know, and so it's a little bit stricter that way. That makes sense. Have we ever? I know we survey people from time to time, which is a really fun thing to do. Um, have we ever asked our community if this is an issue in any of the surveys? Like, is financial barriers a, a bar to participation? Like, like, do we have data to back up? What I feel like I feel like we're making decisions without good information. And it doesn't seem like there's a problem. So I I feel like we're having mm -hmm. a solution in one of a problem. And without the data, just like, I, I like evidence-based, like I know what everyone says all the time, but I like to make decisions based on good information. And I would like to see information that says we have a, a subset of, of our population who this is prohibiting or making their lives difficult, or they're not able to participate, or it makes it's a financial hardship for their family and they're not able to take advantage of the fee waiver that's available to them for whatever reason, like, is this a problem? I don't think that is a problem. The the fee, I, I, I don't, I don't, it's my understanding, similar to Mike's, that there has been nobody that has been barred from participating. I think what is what has happened is you've got a group of people that for, for four, prior to last year were not paying their fee and now they have to, to participate, pay. and now they have to pay. And so is it is $50 to participate, like, like our student rep is 50. She was one who it was a barrier for her to participate. She did not check the box. She just didn't participate in the club because for her to spend $50 to it wasn't a good investment. No, was not a good investment. And so um, and then she was not the only we had other students, uh, according to her, um, that, that made the same choice, made the same decision. So the $50 per activity is the one that seems to be the barrier, just at that cost point seems to be a barrier. Um, it doesn't mean that they can't check the box. Absolutely not. They could check the box. They could qualify for a waiver, but they're not doing that either. Their choice is instead to just not participate. Now, is that everybody? No, I just don't know the number. I can't give you a number. Of students that yeah, yeah. I think that's why I, I think that's why I originally said that yeah. not naive to think that some people are too proudful yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to yeah. absolutely you know ask for that help. but there isn't like when you check the box for example you don't then have to produce any documentation you no, are actually just checking the box one conversation and, we are, with the and we are taking somebody yeah. at that's at right. base value mm -hmm. like you can't pay for that okay you're you're welcome in. to join You're in. yeah right it's not like i can think about in previous times and earlier in my career where uh, you know a family might have to produce a free and reduced lunch form sure that or was, something yeah. like that so yes. so i think that the district is working hard to make sure yeah. that there's not a you know like people aren't made to feel lesser absolutely because they're checking the box because and nobody even sees it. It's not even on the paper. And we're not even involved in, in our office. Yeah, uh, right. The business manager handles yeah. all of it. And I'd want more data, sort of like, why is that a barrier? Is it a barrier because your own your math is that you're only going to participate for 50 percent of the year, and so it's not worthwhile for you to prioritize this, and instead you're going to expend funds prioritizing that because that's not a financial barrier yeah. so much as it is prioritizing your budget, right. which is a good thing we want people to do, and yeah. also their time budget, which for a lot of our students is just as just as valuable Correct. for them is mm -hmm. the time they have to expend on any one activity. Well, oh, yeah, and I don't think we have any data to suggest that it's not working. And if anything, the participation rates suggest it's working. It's yeah. the opposite. You know, that there isn't necessarily a you know quote problem here at all. Um, so well, the other thing, the other piece of this, remember there's like two tracks going on. We have the concern that was brought to us, but then we also have 
when we started looking into this, that we need to annually review the fees. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. we kind of have these two tracks going on. Yeah. Um, so if we decide to leave them as is and send this on to the board um, for first and second reading for the year, I mean, that's an option too, and not right. make any changes. Right. I'm in support of not making changes. And the next time that you are surveying, maybe you have a question about whether financial financial impacts, participation and extracurricular activities, just to, to see like if, you know, if we get a big group that says, yeah, I'm only doing half the clubs I would do, I'm only doing half the sports I would do, then I would be really interested in taking a look at this and seeing, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we have hyper rate, but maybe we could get more of multi-sport players, even though we have an X amount. I mean, right. teams are so, full. So, so like, yeah, and I've, I've, I've said this before with um, Mike and others too, like I've done this before and um, going from the a la carte and, and to to the one to the to the one fee, no matter what if you play one sport, two sports, three sports, the same with the activity. And there are some benefits, but you're taking a significant hit in revenue in terms of like that 133 becomes 70. Well, and I think right and, now, given what we're asking, like I, I'm not. We have to be, you know, we have to be able to read the room as well, right? Like this, yep. this feels and like a, was, not a good well, time. right. And the, well, and, and the reason, <laughs> and, and the, the kind of the impetus behind it was this idea that that emanated from the board and the community too, but that 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 these activities are a central component to a child's yeah. experience, and therefore mm -hmm. there shouldn't be any fees at all. And this was a kind of a, almost like a step down to get there right yeah. um with the recognition that you're going to be pulling in less money and therefore you've got to backfill in order to keep mm -hmm. your programs going you know and it becomes just part of the you know essentially part of the budget but yeah um one of the one of the a couple of the benefits of doing it was we did see an increase in multi-sport athletes there were more kids who were playing either two seasons or three seasons um, and then just, you know, did, did more basically because it would, and then the other benefit, at least from an administrative one is that you're collecting fees once a year and then you're done. You're not chasing people down every season or having to really, Thank you. you know, whatever, like you're, you're not, you're, it's not like the beginning of every season. Okay. Now I've got to get these, you know, and so that, that from just from an administrative point of view, having just that one moment in the year where you're collecting your fees was um, obviously there's some benefits to that administratively but um if it ain't broke don't fix it certainly applies here yeah i'm just uh, given the rate of participation if we were lower than average or struggling to fill our teams you know i'd look at it but i'm just i don't i don't like solutions without problems <laughs> lots of unintended consequences i think it's a good idea to maybe we could send out a survey, mm -hmm. you know, we could come up with that in our department even maybe. And, um, you know, to gauge that, to gather more information before a decision's made, makes sense. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. And then that will give us maybe some time to figure out the financial side of, of an impact too. Yeah. Yeah. You know. All right, so you don't want to not charge activity fees, and all of a sudden we have to cut a program. Right, <laughs> right. You, know, you, right. Know, you know, right. You don't want to cut a program. I'm not yeah. being. I don't want to like an alarmist, but right, we're we don't want to create we're, a problem. We're yet. really on that tightrope and yeah. with my budget. Sure. Well, so I mean, it's you know, do you? That's why he breaks down to a sweat every time I talk about that because it's like it's a big yeah. it's a big hit. Yeah, if, it is. It's making huge. that decision. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. even if even if you increase the fee to a level that's maybe even equivalent or higher than a one sport, it's still, you're, you're taking a hit, a pretty yeah. big hit in terms yeah. of the amount of money you're bringing in to help fund. Yeah, we have a huge ask things. on the table right now. So for us to then turn around and say, by the way, even though we're asking for 150 million, I'm going to ask to have another 80,000 on top of that. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm not advocating either way, but just in terms of information that, you know, it is an offset that's going to be made up some point. Right. Yeah. And so how, yeah. do you, how do you make it up? How do you make that up? And so I think the research piece is important. Yeah. The information sense. piece. All right. So it sounds like the recommendation from this committee for the next meeting will be to leave the fees the same and then have um, the activities 
department um, and athletics department survey students for and for next year to see if there's a barrier for participation and then next year for next year's consideration. Yeah, and we have to look at this every year, right? I'm not yes, uh, every year. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, We're, we'll have this discussion again. Yeah. They're doing a la carte thing, so. Right. <laughs> Does that sound good to you, Jillian? Yes, yeah, I, yes. You're hopelessly behind and failing miserably at keeping this on track. It's all good. Ah. Gonna blow, blow. Thanks. We're going to move past on these next. Yeah, I think our next is second yeah. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. We have much to do there. We have nothing to do. I didn't even open up, up on my computer. Um, There were no, there was no there's feedback yeah, right. on any of these. I hope they read them, although they are all statutory. And I can yeah. pull my orange back out at the next meeting. They always love when they do that. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so <laughs> um, I don't I don't have anything to discuss with this one. Somebody no. has something else. Yeah. Cool. All, right. well, all right, look at that. We're ahead of schedule. Just, uh, <laughs> just like that, we're ahead. <laughs> I needed this throughout my day. I did not have this for my day. Um <sighs> conduct with students. Uh let's dive right in. Uh who has a are you gonna have a working copy of this, Diane? Yeah. So I don't mess hold, hold, up. I, real quick, um, I think Backwards. that the time on the agenda and then the time on the boxes is, are we meeting till 4.30? No, I just messed up. The My math skills failed miserably. We were meeting to 4.30, I thought. Yeah. Because you have to get off for a meeting and I've got a little wait. Yes, we have uh, We have another we have a meeting tonight. Yeah, so um, do we want to not do this in the next seven minutes because that's yeah. impossible? Yeah, oh, I am yeah. thinking, but what I'm wondering is why we have Mike here, if we should skip do seven minutes of facility. That, it, yes. Yeah, let's do it. Let me grab yeah, it. yeah. It. I like it. Seven minutes of facilities naming and then the staff conduct would be on the next. The next one. So table that. Yeah. The gauge long jump tip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me go back. You got a lot of really good materials for us. I really appreciate that. Like, yeah, Mike's done a lot of work. Yes, yeah, that's very clear. Where did that font come from? I said, where did that font come from? It's so funny. No idea. Definitely want to uh, thank Mike for all the work he's done on this one. Mm -hmm. um, what yes. we realized, or what he realized, and then we realized when he brought this stack of policies on on naming facilities is that it is all over the map mm -hmm. in terms of you know different yeah. towns or different communities or whether there's a policy at all and if they do it's there's it's very very difficult to find any consistency in how, how it's and I have to apologize. I printed some things and I left it on the printer, but I think I sent had sent you yeah, um, you know, kind of a sample. Um, yeah. I think we called it FF because I think mm -hmm. that that's what it is yeah. in the Drum and Woodsome um, or in other school school in other schools. schools. Yeah. So we first that, that packet first looked at some surrounding similar size um school systems and what they do and like the superintendent said it it is really all over the place so we try to you know i tried to um this is a weird way to say it but you try to take the best from each yeah. each mm -hmm. one and you know synthesize that into something that makes sense for our um school department and our town and so that's that's what was, I think, part of that packet. Mm -hmm. um, and it includes things like memorials too. Like for example, mm -hmm. um, the, I call it the new flagpole. It's probably not new to some people, but it wasn't here when I started. The new flagpole at the end of the turf field, the big one that the flag flies over the scoreboard, that's fairly new. And that was a memorial um, to somebody that the town had done. Um, and I just think having gone through this a few times now, I think it's important that we have some type of uh, governance around mm -hmm. it. Maybe this might be too much. 
or you know, or or not inclusive enough. I you know, it would be, you know, that would be up to you for your discussion. But um, I think there should be some level of governance around it and um, some criteria. And and there are many, many examples of why we should do that. Um, and people have seen names being taken off of things and, um, yeah, is, and yeah. those types yeah. of, and, and we, I don't know that our town, we would want to get into, into that. Like um, we name something and then something happens and we now have to change the name of that something. Mm -hmm. And so why not deal with it on the front end? And so having gone through it a few times here, I, I think it's important to have some level of governance around it, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. I made some suggestions based on those school departments and tried to pull out, you know, what I thought was really the best of those that made sense for us. It's hard, they're hard discussions, you know, because it on that second page, especially it talks about you know, the recommendation was not naming something until somebody's deceased. And so those are hard discussions, mm -hmm. but um, the reality of it is that you have a lot of examples of those things not happening and then changes having to be made because um, there was some revelation about something. So anyways, I, I, I offer that up and happy to help with further discussions about it, but Really, I think the information is is there for you to take a look at. It was extremely comprehensive. Thank yeah. you. I, I reviewed it, and and the policy draft is is it's a very well drafted document. Mm -hmm. um, I think my one place, which is not actually about what you drafted, it's um, I think what we need is we need to get the town council on board. Would they amend their ordinance to allow us? To, I think because naming the facilities belong to the town, yes. they have a lot of they they have control over the buildings, the names of the buildings. Yes. And so I don't know if they would allow would um delegate to us the ability to collect applications and present for their review to allow them to continue to name the buildings, but at least put it within the town ordinances, the fact that the school board will forward all the nominations to them. So they still retain the power and control to do the naming. But the school board has input on what goes on the buildings for the kid, and they would have to agree to that. I mean, they would have to agree to delegate that. That, you know, and I think the best we could hope for would be allow us to be the conduit to allow us to to maintain the application process to to put exactly what you've drafted, which is to put together the procedure, to put together the qualifications, and then we would forward to their for approval or denial. Yeah, so with the last conversation I had with town council about this would be um, almost essentially what you said. So. Um, our policy would be um, to draft the procedures for making a recommendation to town council. Yeah. Town council then would take our recommendation and vote on it, and, and they would be the final arbiter of, mm -hmm. uh, of the name. So um, we would then own um, the application process. We would own the um, uh, recommendation process, and then we would put something forward. We would vote, and then... So we I think we have to spell that out a little yeah. bit in here, because... Yeah. I, I don't know that that's the same in other districts where the town owns, but the school doesn't. And you kind of got this like weird well, yeah, started. like thing happening at the same time. Um, so we would have to add that. That is a thing I was just going to suggest too. Um, uh, but um, what I would think we would do as a policy committee is, uh, I say that I had the last conversation I had was with the former um, town council chair. And then I've had a since had a conversation with the current town council chair, but I think we would have to draft up what we think looks good and send it to them and have them take a look. So send them a draft it. town ordinance. Mm -hmm. Essentially giving us, I mean, like the more work we do, the, the less friction we have, mm -hmm. the more likely this is to go through. Yeah, because so, they don't have anything right now either. Yeah, no, there's nothing that, on so either side. Take us out of just let their policy okay. community do what they want to do with it. And then, but advocate for it at their policy committee well, and then come to an agreement. Yes. And I, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think the benefit of having a procedure um, and or a policy is that then um, 
when these conversations come up, they're not being led by emotion, right? Right. Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That they're really about well, what's the process. Yeah. Well, and like not, and, and frankly, not being determined by one person or right. Per, like, like I mean, in in lieu of having any kind of a process or procedure, mm -hmm. you know, it just opens it up to mm -hmm. whoever's voice is louder. Yeah. yeah. I think in in our, you know, I hope that there will be a collaborative approach to it because. There is an impact on our students when you start naming the facilities that the school students are the primary users of. Absolutely. There, there's, a, there's an impact on kids. And so I would hope that there would be a collaborative, you know, approach to, to that work because there's an impact, you know, and so. Mm -hmm. And I think it actually would help them as well because it would take away the randomness and yeah. allow everyone to point because most people like a procedure so there's not there can be orderly move through and, and what it does for this group is functionally gives the school a veto which is what it needs we may not always get what we want but at least we can prohibit something from happening and that would be not within keeping with the standards the school would expect mm -hmm. for yeah. buildings right it's like that yep. and i think that i think again i, I think that's good enough so maybe um, what I can do, I, I think, or maybe it's you, because it's a chair. I think Jean Marie, the, I feel like Jean Marie might be the policy committee I Jean -Marie. chair. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering if maybe we, our policy committee works kind of like what we've done with communications, like Jillian, like when you've worked with the town council communications team and both teams have worked together, like this could be something very similar. Our policy committee works with theirs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I will contact you and just see what what they would like, and then we can start getting something together maybe for our next meeting to look at. Mm -hmm. And I'll look at same what you did. I'll look at the town ordinances to see what they have if they have yeah. any. Yeah, then, I'm not sure that they do. Yeah, I think yeah. they don't yeah. Think they do either. Yeah, so that would be so it could be a very good collaborative benefit both of us kind of mm -hmm. thing. But like the superintendent said, I think that just it can't be just. Um, you know, okay, her girl. situation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, should, it really should be some some level of governance, whatever that is. Right. And right now, um, yeah, it's Jean Marie. All right. Right now, um, because there's nothing, we have nothing to go off of, nothing to give people when they ask, right? And right. we know we've had we we get asks. And that's become more and more it's become more and more in recent years than I've seen. Yeah. All right, I will call Jean Marie and try to get that started and see what I can do. Ready for our next meeting. Good. All right, we are four minutes over. Is there anything to wrap up? We do need our next meeting date. No. I need our next meeting date to put on my calendar. Um, I put September 11th, question mark. I don't know why. That works for me. That would be good thing. September 11th, good. Yep, that's a Monday. It's our traditional meeting date. All right. Okay. That was four o'clock, okay. 3 30 almost killed me today getting here. Perfect. We'll see you then. Bye. 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 Bye.